Hey everyone, this is George Coase. Welcome to a special episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, thanks so much for being here today, for joining me in this podcast. And I'm actually going to talk about um, the new release that we just have out because of a teacher to stories from the first years of teaching. And what's really kind of neat is that this series because of a teacher um the first one and now the second one actually came out of this podcast uh years ago i wanted to just really kind of say um honor educators all over the world because i felt um obviously they were overwhelmed with everything that was happening during covid and they're hearing a lot of negativity um you know toward them and things like that and i wanted to to not only you know provide words of affirmation in our stories and the things that we could share, but I want to encourage people to share stories. And too often we only hear the negative stuff and think about this too. Um, when you comment on social media to a company or when you connect with your IT department, let's even say that, right? IT departments, I think get crapped on the most in the world. How many times do you call the IT department and say, Hey, the internet worked all day. Thanks. <laughs> we often just complain, right? And we do this too. I'm I'm guilty of this, you know, and I've really tried to be thoughtful of this is that when we have these really positive thoughts, we tend to keep them to ourselves. But when uh, the negative things come in, we tend to share them with others. And so I wanted to kind of flip that and reverse that. Uh, I just sang a Miss Elliot song. And so <laughs> I, I want to kind of give you the behind the scenes um, of you know, because of a teacher too, uh, and the, the idea behind it. And uh, the first because of a teacher was focused on three questions that I ask on this podcast all the time. Uh, who's a teacher that inspired you? Who's an admin that inspired you? And what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? And in the first because of a teacher, I had five people answer each one of those questions. And it's absolutely amazing. I'm so proud of that book. And I, I, I feel like I'm more proud of it than the other ones because of um, the amazing voices I um, was able to talk into being a part of that process. And which is why I'm really excited about this one as well, because 15 new uh, authors, including myself, putting this together, sharing our stories uh, through this. But this one is, per, is focused specifically on what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? And you can actually see, um, you can see if you're watching on YouTube, here they are, here, here they are. Here's the list of authors you can see on your screen. And uh, they are all in part of because of a teacher. And when you when you see this list, these are pretty amazing educators. And you probably know some of them, you might know all of them, but they all have like, um, big social followings, they've all had success in their career, they've had variations of both, etc. And what I loved about this book is that they talk about their first years of teaching and what we often see is the end point of journeys or nearing the end, but not the beginning. And so you can see that, you know, we all struggle. We all have these, these aspects. And I remember when I, I first um, walked into uh, the staff lounge, uh, my first days of teaching, there's um, the first days of school, right? You know, probably everyone in education knows that book. And I really wanted to... I didn't necessarily want to replicate it, but I wanted to, you know, revise that in some ways. I wanted to bring a, a new thought, uh, and I don't want to say more modern, even though that's the first thing that comes to my mind. But instead of like hearing it from one person on what you should do at the beginning of, of your career, have it from different people and through the voice of story and through the voice of here are the things that I did wrong that I wish I could go back. And do and here's some of the things that went really right at the beginning of my career as well and so this is this is obviously a book that would be hugely beneficial to people just starting their career in their first year etc but the way that everyone wrote this book and wrote their stories no matter where you are in your career and that's what i love about it you this will be beneficial to you because it will remind you because if you don't have hard days i don't you're probably not in education right the reality of this is we still struggle. And that's what I love about the, the authors that shared these stories is that they actually shared struggles they're having currently, even though they're, they're seen often as very, very successful and their vulnerability and authenticity and the way they share these stories with humor and grace um, and emotion is something that I'm really proud of. And so 
Uh, I wanted to share the first chapter and what I do um, is I actually write um, a chapter for each part to kind of introduce it, share my uh, a story of my own, and then kind of set the stage for the authors. But this is actually um, the introduction for the book. And I'm going to read it to you, but I'm also, you know, provide maybe a little bit of commentary, uh, kind of like a DVD. Does anyone have DVDs? Maybe Blu-ray? I don't know. A behind the scenes. Do you have behind the scenes in the channel? Who knows? All right. So this is the introduction for Because of a Teacher to the first years of teaching, which you can actually get. It's on the link down below. And I just want to share with you all because uh, I'm really proud of this book. And um, I, I read my chapter before I read it. And yeah, it was kind of nice to reread it um, before just to make sure I don't say anything stupid. But I just look at this list and I can see it, you know, on my screen. I have it over to my side here. And I, I'm just, these these are like the people that I'm asking to write these books. I, I know them all to some extent and some better than others. Um, some I'm getting to know better. And they just, they just did such an, I'm so proud of this group. They're just absolutely amazing. And I'm so blessed that they're a part of this and something that uh, we'll have together forever. So here it is the introduction of Because of a Teacher to the First Years of Teaching. I will cherish the impact you've had on my life forever. A student speaking to a teacher. I was less than five days into my first teaching job when a student came up to me and said, can I ask you a question? I fought the urge to say no. You never know if the question is going to be A, one you don't want to know or how to answer, or B, more of a statement than a question. It was the latter in this scenario. Mr. Kroos, you went to school for 13 years as a student, then to university for four, all so that you could come back to school for the next 30 years of your life? I went to university for six, six years, by the way, but that's beside the point. I was waiting for the why or what is wrong with you, but that was the end. My favorite part of the story is that the student just walked away without even waiting for an answer. Hey, kid, next time you ask, why are you so dumb? <laughs> Fewer words, same point. Have you, have you seen the meme where a small child, after being asked a question by a reporter, begins to laugh, but then slowly <laughs> breaks down in tears? I was that meme before memes were a thing. This is more of a why would you do this with your life moment delivered by an eight-year-old with the precision of a heart surgeon whether they are questioning your life choices or identifying a newly formed zit on your forehead kids tend to point out things that adults hope they will ignore as i sat there and thought what in the world am i doing here i started to laugh hysterically because that kid's question was exactly one of the reasons i wanted to teach kids are the best even when they are the worst there, there's a reason why we hear colleagues say kids are easy. The adults are the challenge. I've always appreciated viewing the world through the eyes of youth, not only as an educator, but also as a dad. That same year, my students begged me to watch the movie My Dog Skip on a Friday afternoon to celebrate a hard week. I succumbed to memories of my own teachers being cheered like conquering heroes as they pushed the TV card into the classroom and to imagining myself morphing into that hero in my students' eyes. Side note, I said, push the cart because there's a literal sign on the TV cart that reminded you that if you pulled the cart into the classroom, you could become injured because in some school, somewhere in that world, that in the world, that accident totally happened. About 90 minutes into the movie, I was crying profusely in front of 25 eight-year-olds who were now considerably more interested in the teacher who was bawling than in the movie itself. Dog movie, don't even get me started. 20 years later, one line from that movie still resonates. Why in childhood and youth do we wish time to pass so quickly? We want to grow up so fast, yet as adults, we wish just the opposite. That powerful quote was, to me, the answer to the student's question. I became a teacher because I enjoyed my childhood, my school experience, and being around people with that same youthful exuberance. Although I'm an adult, an educator, and a dad, that enthusiasm remains with me because I got to be around students. Obviously, there is no such thing as a fountain of youth, but the closest thing I found to it is being a teacher. Nothing will keep you feeling as young while simultaneously aging you as the teaching profession. Students' contagious enthusiasm has, has inspired me to try things I would have never otherwise. I initially aimed to become a kindergarten teacher because there was no way I was going to teach high school or middle school. Yet I later found that I actually enjoyed teaching older age groups. Although my jokes needed to be adjusted based on the year. Booger jokes just don't hit the same with the high school crowd. But as much as I love teaching and being around students, 
Teaching is tough. Often it is not the teaching itself that is tough, but all the things you must do. Or the teaching is tough, plus you must do all the other things. Sometimes all of it is tough, and then you throw in a global pandemic. That one feels like juggling knives on a unicycle with a broken wheel while someone says, let's add fire. Not easy. As you progress in your career, some of the stuff becomes easier and some of it doesn't. If you're passionate about what you do, it never really becomes easy. It is hard in a different way. Teaching is always emotionally taxing and there will be challenging days. But teaching is such an amazingly rewarding endeavor that the really good days make up for the tough ones in the end. Because of a teacher. In the first edition of Because of a Teacher, I asked a group of wonderful educators to answer three questions. Who is a teacher that inspired you and why? Who is an administrator that inspired you and why? And what, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? These educator stories are powerful and so profound that I wanted to do it all over again, this time with a new group of educators. I asked them to focus solely on the last question, not only as a gift to those entering the profession, but also as a reminder to those who have been in it for a while, whatever their position is today. Because that's the thing about teaching. You're always a new teacher. The idea that I'm always new to teaching reminds me that I must continue to learn. Once you quit learning, your teaching days are numbered. As you read the stories from this group of talented educators, you'll notice both an expertise and a vulnerability. They discuss what they wish they knew when they started, and they share the changes they have faced and the challenges still unfolding before them. Their thoughts and experiences serve as beautiful reminders that teaching, like learning, is an endeavor of continuous growth. I did not guide their writing other than by providing a question and a word count. What advice would you give to your first year teacher self was the jumping off point. And I naturally encouraged the stories that authentically mattered most to each educator. Soon I noticed three themes emerging, relationships, connection, and self and finding our own voices. The first theme focused on how important relationships are to the work we do as educators. Our relationships with students are key, of course, but so are our relationships with colleagues. And this is often forgotten with ourselves. One of the biggest lessons I've learned is that constantly giving to others without caring for ourselves eventually leaves us with nothing to give anyone. As the saying goes, you can't pour from an empty cup, no matter how hard you try to capture every last drop to support others. The, author, the authors here consistently articulate the need for an occasional loss of that balance. The second message that emerged was the importance of creating connections both externally and internally. Education can be an extremely isolating job and many of us don't want to ask for help. However, asking for help is not only a sign of strength, but also a sign of wisdom. Your colleagues understand the stresses of your workplace. They know if one person struggles, everyone does. Lean on the people in your buildings, in your community, and across the world. But the internal connections we make are also important to our learning. Trends come and go, so there will always be things you learn and elements you discard. But you must internalize what works for your students and for yourself. Here we see the power of asking teachers to look back to their first days on the job. What trends have passed by and which ones hold firm? Looking back is key to moving forward. Reflection is not only crucial, but also necessary. The final theme that emerged was the importance of helping students find their voices while also establishing your own authentic teaching voice and style. When anyone tells you that you should teach one way or another, take that as a suggestion, not as a directive. There's so much you can learn from the lessons of others, but you must never forget to be authentically you. If you aren't, your students will sniff it out and you will lose purpose in a job where many factors can seem to be working against you. As a teacher and a dad, all I ask is this, help kids to find their voices, not to replicate yours. The freedom to both articulate and unpack points of confusion supports lifelong learning. Whether we are talking about kindergartners or veteran teachers, once again, the best way to help others find their grifts is by embracing your own. Now, these themes aren't neatly packaged, but they are there. My hope is that as you read these stories, they will spark connections to your own teaching history and shine a light on the moments when your authentic voice helped you succeed, as well as moments when you felt lost and didn't know where to turn. Share your story and people gravitate not only to what you have learned, but also to who you are. These educators did a wonderful job. I share so thoughtfully mused. If I could turn back time, I do want to share some quick suggestions for those new to the profession. Again, the hope is that these ideas will resonate at any point in your career. But if I go, if I could go back to 1999, the year of the infamous Y2K bug that never happened, which I'll be honest with you, I like hid on New Year's Day because I was so terrified of this. Like that's what media will do to you. 
I would tell myself some of the crucial information you'll see below. Remember though, that such advice is valid only until it isn't. That is the beauty of this profession and learning in general. We often look back and say, how could I have thought that 10 years ago? And then we reverse our thinking again in the future. I, if I ask you to continuously grow, but tell you that I'm done growing, that I'm not being authentic. That's not a guy anyone wants to learn from. So this is what I believe as of today. One, build relationships right away. If this one changes in the future, I'll be shocked, but you never know. Usually when we hear about the importance of relationships in education, the focus is on how we build rapport with our students, but do not limit yourself to that. Do not hide away from staff on breaks. I learned that the support I needed from the teachers was essential to doing well that first year and beyond. But I also saw how the connection with the secretaries, custodians, and support staff were beneficial. The secretary always seemed to be the lifeblood of the schools I taught or worked at and weirdly seemed to know everything. Maybe that's not true, but it sure felt true. And our educational assistants that work in the classrooms are so influential and knowledgeable about many things our staff does. Make sure they always feel valued. Here's another tip. Don't judge people or staff with whom you don't connect right away. I once had a teaching colleague who seemed like a massive grump and we had zero interactions during the first four months of the school year. As I left school to head home for the holidays, I was surprised to hear him distinctly call out, have a great winter break. Those are the first few words he said to me the entire year. After this break, this colleague became one of the biggest influences on my career. Some people need a little time to warm up, but it doesn't mean they are negative. If you give people the benefit of the doubt, they might surprise you. Two, ask questions if you don't know something. It's much better than pretending to know. It's easy to think you're a burden to other staff members if you ask a bunch of questions when trying to uh, acclimate to your new surroundings. But remember that everyone you ask for help needed from someone else at some point. It is often far easy, easier to ask for advice first than to go back and fix something you messed up because you didn't want to ask in the first place. Most teachers I've worked with truly want to help you figure things out. That is why I got into to teaching in the first place. Remember that asking questions is always a great way to get to know your colleagues. Don't hesitate to ask early and often. Three, call caregivers or something positive about their child as soon as possible. Confession, I was terrified of parents when I first started as a teacher. I, uh, that was absolutely true. And I, I think that you know would be true today. Still, still do this. I knew how precious their children were to them, so I really didn't want to mess up. But parents need to know that you value their child. Child, If your first interaction with parents consists of discussing something negative, this can damage your relationship with them in the long run. Being proactive is com in communication is crucial. Never, and this is like, I tell people this to this day, never communicate something negative to a parent via email or through direct message or by using whatever it is we're using today. The parent must hear your voice or see your face and probably both. Bad news is always best served when you can support someone through it. As Francis Ogurian, an amazing school secretary, once said to me before I called a parent with some tough news, remember that child is everything to them. So please make sure they know that you care about their child and see them as a whole person, not the sum of this incident. That can't be done over email. I actually remember that advice so distinctly um, as an administrator. Um, it was like when I first became an assistant principal, and that stuck with me forever, and I still think about it to this day. So thanks, Francis Aguirian. Number four, ask yourself, what am I doing for the students that they can be doing for themselves? I glean the above advice from my friends, AJ Giuliani and John Spencer, and so blessed to actually have AJ as one of the authors of this book. It is so easy to do everything for our classrooms, but some of the things we do, and some we hate doing, are things our students would love to do. I was constantly asked to fix technology issues in my school, which was frustrating, and diverted my attention from my classes. One day, one of my students asked if he could do it for me, and suddenly a student tech support team was created. Not only did it take things off my plate, but also the students who volunteered to lead the initiative took more ownership over the school. What I saw as, a work, uh, as work was a learning opportunity that I had been taking away from my students. Throughout the year, see where you can create less work for yourself while also providing an empowering opportunity for your students. I think, and this is an aside, the thing with this is that when students have ownership over the school, they see themselves, you know, as part of taking care of things, there, there's much more pride in this too, right? Um, think about this, this little simple thing. You actually have, I don't know if anyone remembers this, this is a little date how long I've been teaching. Remember kids used to flick keys out of keyboards, right? They didn't care because it wasn't their computer. But when kids got their own 
laptops and they could take them home, they weren't like flipping the keys like Hebrews because that was their laptop. And so when we have ownership over things, we tend to actually take more care. Just, just a little aside. Five, have a life outside of school. If your entire focus is on teaching and you're spending hours upon hours at school, you're more likely to burn out. There's so many meaningful connection, meaningful ways to connect and learn from colleagues outside of school, including through social networks. But that doesn't mean you have to spend every waking moment filling your head and heart with education related activities. Connect with friends and family, engage in the activities that you love and avoid focusing on teaching all the time. It's okay to enjoy summer and weekends That is part of sharpening the saw. Long term, this can make you a better teacher. Students want to connect with people who are teachers, not teachers who happen to be people. As I said earlier, if you give all of yourself to others, eventually you won't be giving anything to anyone. Six, having a tough day is okay. As a principal, I encourage my teachers to take a mental health day if they need one. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it isn't an issue. Taking those mental health days can have long-term benefits because they can, because be the, they can be the difference between working at 50% for five days or working at 100% for four. And although some people expect the teachers to take unfair advantage of these mental health days, it never happened. Not once did I ever feel someone was taking advantage of me when I offered this to my staff. Also, don't hesitate to talk to someone. I had many tremendously helpful conversations with principals and colleagues when I was having personal and professional struggles. I saw that I should never worry alone. So many people have faced the same struggles and come out on the other side. We all have bad days. Don't take one as a permanent defeat. Recognize it as something we all go through maybe even begin to believe from it. And I think this is something that is really kind of like a really powerful statement in the sense that you think about this book and these educators I mentioned earlier, they're gonna share some of the bad days they had with you. And you can see how amazingly uh, positive and successful they are in their careers. And it was just something that they learned from. They didn't you know, let it set them back, but they actually grew from the process. Number seven, surround yourself with solution focused people and be that positive uh, person for others. There is a distinction between people who challenge rules and systems and people who are simply negative about them. We need people who challenge our thinking, but simply complaining or taking shots at others is not helpful. Being, being challenging can be an element of caring, but there's, there's a way we can do it while still showing the value place in one another. However, not everyone we counter will be positive. This quote from, being, from the popular Mark and Angel Hack Life blog has always resonated. Being positive does not mean ignoring the negative. Being positive means overcoming the negative. There is a big difference between the two. Here are a few points to consider after reading this quote. One, you don't necessarily need to avoid negative people, but try to find solution-focused people. Two, dwelling on problems doesn't fix them. Often, it can actually make them worse. And three, the people you surround yourself with in and out of school can either be a fountain or a drain. So kid, consider which one you are to others. I know I wrote that, but I love that advice. That is very important advice to me. Eight, don't get sucked into gossip. If someone is gossiping to you about someone else, they could be easily gossiping to someone else about you. Enough said. Nine, ask for feedback early, not late. It's hard when you're just getting started to know how you're doing as a teacher. It can sometimes be tough even later in your career. It often feels as if different administrators have different expectations. So determine how you're doing by asking others to observe you and offer feedback to help you grow. Do not limit this to your administrators. Ask colleagues to observe your class and give you feedback. Some of the best advice I ever received for my teaching came from other teachers who see, who'd seen me leading a classroom. Yes, it is daunting, but it is always better to get feedback too early rather than too late. 10, remember why you teach. There are some tough days ahead of you. Classrooms are unpredictable and no day looks the same as the next. One day you'll think that you have mastered teaching and the next day you'll realize you're terrible. <laughs> Also, I never, I never felt post-secondary prepared me for the endless documentation of many light, late nights of markings and meetings. Teacher, teaching is not as glamorous as what you see on TV, but that doesn't mean it has to be less inspiring. What is so amazing about education as a profession is that what you do impacts people who themselves later go out and impact people. In this sense, teachers will never, and honestly, this is why I write this book, get the recognition they deserve because their impact can be infinite. Think of it this way. If while reading this book, a teacher story encourages you to try something new or do something positive, that is because their teachers gave them the tools to share their voices. You will do the same for an endless amount of people. Don't forget that. To the administrators who, and this is an aside, to the administrators who are listening or reading or part of this book right now, I just want to share a little side note with you. Don't, we always tell teachers to remember their why, do not do things to make them question it. 
That's the that's a piece of advice I'll give you. Moving forward. I wrote this in the original because of a teacher and still holds true. A teacher's influence doesn't stay in school. It goes out to the world and cannot truly ever be measured. Every student you inspire to do something great goes on to inspire others. There is no limit to your impact. Still true, will always be true. Want proof? You're reading this book because of a teacher and someone will go on to do great things because of you. Here's one last tip. It is okay to cry. Teaching is such a rewarding profession, but it is a tough job. Just try to laugh way more than you cry or laugh and cry. And that's like the best face, the laugh cry face. <laughs> Thanks for all you do and for being here. As a dad and an educator, it matters more than an express. And so um, at the end of each chapter, and that's the end of this chapter, we offer three questions. And what's beautiful about it is that the questions are something you can do for self-reflection. Uh, we'd love you to blog about them, you know, do an Instagram, Twitter post, a video post there, but it's so perfectly set up um, to have conversations with others so we can help each other grow. But that is because of a teacher too, the introduction. And uh, if I scared you off <laughs> from this chapter, trust me, it gets way better because other people jump in. And as you said, as I said earlier, the group that wrote this with me is absolutely incredible. I feel so blessed uh, to be a part of, of leading this project. So um, thanks for taking the time to listen. I hope you enjoy the book. Uh, if you get it, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, and I'd love to hear the stories that inspired you. And make sure that if you read a story by one of these incredible um, contributors to this book, tag them on social media. Let them know. Don't be the person that wishes other people would say, let you know um, the impact that you've had and not be that person for others. I think that's kind of the whole premise behind the book. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.